Yeah, so, um, wings are on, I glued them in place, have to do a little filling of this gap right here, there's sections of the wing that have to go on right here still, but before I do that, I'm going to go on to section uh, or step number 43 step 43 is uh, 43 and 44 is adding uh, parts into the wheel wells and those parts look to be on the H sprue and the I sprue the H and I sprue so let's find the H Parts first, H17, okay, <clears throat> that's right here, there's two of those, two little squares, um, then we have H41 and 42, there they are. H41 and 42 look like some sort of hydraulics actuators or something. Okay, that's 42, which is that one. And here is 41. These are pretty delicate. <laughs> That's 41, 41, 42, what else do we need, H16, H16, okay, well, let's see, where's H16 at? There it is. Okay. <clears throat> these are little parts that go into these wheel wells. So we got this one here, give it a little sand. This part goes upright like that and goes in right there somewhere. Gee, just kind of have to sort of guess, huh? Instructions aren't very clear here. You get a little part like this. Some kind of hydraulic thing. And they show it going into the wheel well. One, two, three in. So let's see. Or <clears throat> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's going to go right there. Okay. Put a little glue on the bottom of this. Count eight bars in, it looks like. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Or one, two, three. Okay, so it's going to go right here. Is that right? I sure hope so. Looks like it probably is. Can't tell. It's hard to tell in these pictures. I think I see though where exactly it's supposed to go. Right there. Right there. Let's add a little more glue to that. Okay. Ah.
there are no pins or pin holes. You just have to lay it down there and hope you've hit it right. Looks like maybe I have. Really hard to tell, but I think that's where it goes, right there. Okay, then the other side, <clears throat> H42, it's the same, same piece. Give this a little sand, especially on the bottom. Bottom part of this piece. <clears throat> Get all those little nubs off from the attachment points on the sprue. Grab the tweezers. Get that in the camera range, okay. Put some glue in the bottom portion of this actuator piece. Okay, then we will attach it right oops right there that's about it okay those are both <clears throat> laid down then there's these little square pieces And these little square pieces, we got to figure out where they go by this drawing here. They go up this direction, and they lay in one, two, three. One, two, three. Let's get this turned around so it's facing the same way. And they go one, two, three. Oh, I see where they go. There's actually a little square right there that they attach to. Okay. So put a little glue on the bottom of this. We'll lay it in right there. Just like that, I guess, huh? No idea what those things are supposed to be, but there it is. Put the other one in there. There, two little squares. One right here, and one right over here. We have this piece right here, which is H16. Give this a little bit of a sand. Now, <clears throat> I don't know about anybody else, but um, I discovered a, a few years back that nail files, Revlon nail files, they're two-sided. It has a coarse side and a fine side. These work really well for sanding plastic. For getting the initial or the uh, <clears throat> as a first step of, of sanding down plastic and um, I also use fine sandpaper the wet and dry fine sandpaper for final touches on stuff okay so this doohickey 
it looks like it's lighting maybe of some kind goes into this back corner here uh, oh man they don't really show you do they looks like it kind of suspends on top of a this little bracket down here so kind of a shelf right there it looks like it goes on which seems kind of precarious to me but there there is a shelf right down here and also what I'll do is I'll take some glue and set it on that little shelf like that and I'll take this little doohickey which is a some sort of light fixture maybe and I will try to place it on that shelf it looks way too big to fit in there to me. It is way too big. I don't see how that's going to fit in there. I really don't. It's oversized for the section I have to put it into. Wow, there's another fit issue right there. Jeez. How many fitting issues is there going to be with this model? <clears throat> you know, I built a, a Revell kit, a 132 scale of the Hawker Typhoon. And uh, it wasn't nearly as difficult as this thing is. Didn't have as many small parts, so it uh, wasn't as detailed, you might say, but it looks good. So this thing is not going to fit. So I don't know. I think what we're going to do is I'm just going to leave it off for right now. For, for right now. Yeah, here we are, and... I've puttied all the seams and I've just begun to sand them and um, <clears throat> once I get that done I can start adding little parts in the wheel wells that they indicate on uh, step 53 and then uh, step 54 is adding more stuff to the wheel wells including the main struts so before we start on the wheel wells again I gotta finish sanding all this putting I put down cleaning it up smoothing it out especially this top part right here this band of putty <clears throat> gotta somehow make that smoothed out and sort of match the rest of this fuselage so I got my sandpaper out my sanding sticks and I'm gonna start working on that so here we go well I've got this as good as I'm gonna get it I think <clears throat> I've done a lot of sanding, smoothing it out. <clears throat> I think what I'm going to do is start masking off the whole canopy, or excuse me, cockpit area, the wheel wells in this area right here. I'm going to mask that all off, intake, and I'm going to um, I'm going to spray this with a coat of. Uh, paint that'll be the base coat the camouflage will go on top of that so I think I'll do that I'll get all my masking stuff and start masking off these uh, openings I 
I put a primer on <clears throat> to uh, well in the hopes that it would show up any uh, bad gaps that I missed or anything like that and it looks fine this is a red oxide primer which I use sometimes it's a very fast drying and it is very good at self leveling and leaves a nice finish it's much better than using a gray primer I think so it looks like uh, all my putty work and my sanding paid off pretty well it's not perfect but it's acceptable so now I'm at the point where I can break out the airbrush and start uh, painting up the final colors on this thing. And I have decided I'm going to go with <clears throat> an RAF, <clears throat> excuse me, an RAF camouflage pattern. So there we go. This thing's all primed up. I basically, to the best of my ability, got the uh, <clears throat> main fitting issues taken care of with the nose and roots of the wing and all that stuff. I will continue now with uh, step 53 and 54 and add some more uh, undercarriage parts to this and let's see let's look ahead here what's coming up yeah there's just more undercarriage parts that are going to go down. They are asking you to install the wheel struts, but I'm going to wait on those. I already have the tires started. I jumped ahead yesterday and started putting together the uh, tires. Um, let's see. I also jumped ahead been doing a lot of jumping ahead in this month. I jumped ahead and put together the uh, drop tanks and I started working on the bombs. And I painted up the exhaust. One blunder, big blunder that I made was when I was putting the, in step 41, when I was working on the wings, putting the wing halves together and putting together the wheel wells and all that stuff, <clears throat> at, at some point you are supposed to, before you glue the wings together, the two halves together, you're supposed to put in a part that has to do with um, navigation lights on the that are on the underside of the wing. In particular, this one right here, that spot. Uh, no, wait, not that one. Excuse me, wrong one. <laughs> this one right here. I forgot to add the part that goes inside the wing here before I glued them together. So now I got this hole. I gotta figure out how to uh, put that part in there somehow because there's supposed to be a a lens that goes in right there. Anyway, I'll figure it out. So there it is. There's the tempest coming along.
I think it's going to look okay when it's done. I kind of almost feel like leaving it red like this. <laughs> Pretty cool looking, actually. But I, I won't. I won't leave it red like that. Okay, I have the underside of the airplane painted. And so, now I will remove the masking off of here, and we'll start painting the upper surfaces. I will start with the gray, and I'm going to use Tamiya XF53 Neutral Gray. It has that blue tinge to it. I think it'll work well and for the green I'm going to use black green which is XF27 and as you can see they go together pretty well so I'm going to do that that's going to be my color scheme Okay, I have the uh, main colors painted down, uh, sprayed down now, and um, <clears throat> uh, I have the, the colors and the pattern that I I want. I'm happy with it, but I have to do some touch up here and there where I kind of messed up. <clears throat> um, this green, I used the Tamiya um, XF27 black green. And for this gray on top, I used the XF53 neutral gray. The dark green that I used, for some reason, didn't want to spray right. Just... Just, I don't know what was going on with it. <clears throat> but anyway, so it came out kind of weird looking. <clears throat> so I just have to touch it up a bit here and there. And um, so right here on the tail section, I'm going to touch that up a little bit. So I'm going to get the camera. Uh, okay. Yeah, this tail section, I'm, I'm going to touch it up a little bit. Um, kind of a weird spot right here I'm going to touch up. A few other weird spots here and there that I'll touch up.
The other thing about this green paint is it took twice as long to dry as this gray did. <clears throat> I didn't realize that about it at first. And I picked up the airplane and put a big old couple of places. I put a couple of prints, thumbprints, fingerprints. So I had to fix those. There's one of them right here. For the most part, it came out okay. <clears throat> this is pretty normal having to do touch up, and it happens all the time. <clears throat> <clears throat> All right, that doesn't look too bad now. Good for the green. Let's go after the gray now a little bit. <clears throat> Yeah, I'm pretty sure that when they painted this camouflage pattern on there, they did it on out in the field, you know, on the base. So each one varied a little bit. <clears throat> and it didn't look like some professional factory done paint job, you know. So I'm not gonna stress over 
getting this looking, you know, museum quality perfect paint job. That looks okay. I'll do a little bit right here. Once this all dries, I'm going to hit it with the clear spray. Yes, here is, <coughs> excuse me, here is the Tempest with the uh, camouflage pattern painted on it. I've been doing some touch up on it and I started putting the um, some of the markings on it, the green the bluish green around the, or the gray green around the tail section, um, the yellow anti-icing, I think, whatever it's called, the leading edges of the wings. I'm not too happy with the way those turned out. I may do more with that. <clears throat> I started inserting the gun barrels in, and I painted them to me a X10 gunmetal. Got one more barrel to put it over here. The holes in these wings where these gun barrels inserted needed some cleaning out. They didn't fit really well so I had to clean those out a bit. <clears throat> Next I'm gonna put the exhaust in I think. Yeah the exhaust is gonna go in here. Um, I'm in the process of painting the propellers right now. I'm actually in a place right now where I think I'm going to put some decals on. Top and bottom. Because this has had a couple coats of uh, 
clear on it already. <clears throat> so I can start putting some decals on. Um, any more painting on the body itself of the airplane, the main body of the airplane, is just going to be touch up here and there. I'm trying not to do too much of that. <clears throat> So there it is, and uh, it's coming along. The uh, the nose to the fuselage section that didn't fit very well. If you look closely, you can still see a very, very, very slight bump right there. And I totally wiped out the rivet detail in here. I'm not going to try and put that back. Not at this point. Not at any point. I'm not going to try and put that back. That's just, you know just the way it goes and like I said at the very beginning of this kit <clears throat> I'm not trying to build something that's going to be displayed in a air museum or a museum any kind of thing like that it's just a at home fun build and that's all it ever will be <clears throat> um, what else can I tell you that's about it, I guess, for now. So, uh, we'll push onward to inserting the other barrel here. And then we'll get started. I think after the barrel, I'll start putting some decals on it. And uh, we'll see how it looks. So, continuing with the theme of poor fitting parts. Um, and this is, this is just, like, completely ridiculous. I mean, <clears throat> it's bad enough that the nose didn't fit to the fuselage and the wings were warped and stuff like that. Something as simple as the exhaust pipes do not fit into the slot provided for them. I am... Uh, it's ridiculous. Way too long. I have been sanding them, and uh, they're way too long and way too near, way too wide for this slot that's here. Okay, they don't fit in there. So I've been kind of trimming it and sanding it and getting it closer and closer, but it's not quite there yet. So another frustrating aspect of this kit, right there, the exhaust pipes. I mean, how ridiculous is that? <clears throat> anyway, I'm not complaining. I'm just stating the facts. <laughs> but, as you can see, I started putting the decals on. Okay. The, uh, the decals were excellent. I mean, I have had no problem with these decals yet. At all. So, um, yeah, I'm happy with those. That came out good. Uh, <clears throat> the paint job is not as good as I'd like it to be, but that's all on me. I had a little trouble with my airbrush, and uh, anyway, um, I did a little hand touch up, and it helped a bit. But overall, you know. It looks all right so I'm gonna move move along with these uh, silly little exhaust pieces and sand them and shave them and do whatever I have to do to get them to fit that seems to be the story the ongoing saga of this kit and its fitting issues that are all over the place If anybody's interested, maybe somebody is, my recommendation for this kit is go ahead and get it, this Revell kit. I can't say anything about the Special Hobbies kit because I didn't build that one. I'm building the Revell copy. And uh, anyway, this Revell kit, um, if you're going to buy it and build this thing, be prepared to get frustrated and to do a lot of sanding and putting and shaving with your exacto knife. 
to get things to fit. I, you know, I've come close to tossing this thing, but I'm, I'm not going to let it get the better of me completely. It has got me frustrated, but I'm going to persevere and get this thing done and uh, just live with the results. So onward we go. All right. I have the exhaust pipes finally installed, such as they are. I have uh, some of the decals on here. For the most part, they uh, laid down really well. There is a bit of silvering on that one right there, around the E and the J. I'm not sure why that happened. A little bit right there, too. I'm hoping that when I get the um, microsaw laid down and all these that they're going to lay down flatter and some of that silvering might go away. And then after they're all completely set up, I'll give them all a uh, clear coat. A couple of light clear coats on them. But yeah, there we are so far. I'm going to go ahead and put more decals on the other side. And uh, I still got this one cannon barrel to put in on the wing. And of course the propeller and the hub. The spinner, I mean. The canopy is going to be the very, very last thing I put on. And of course... All the undercarriage still has to go on. I haven't even... Uh, all I've done with the undercarriage is, is paint a couple parts. And that's about it. So... There's still a good amount of work left to do on this thing. So... Onward we go.